Hello there, it's Claire here from My Creative Spirit. Um, I've had a couple of emails from followers asking me to do my own demonstration on how to use these perfect layer rulers. And my lovely sister Annie is here. And something that she asked me, uh, I think last night, was she'd like to see how to use the perfect layers rulers to get fabulous matting on your scrapbooking and craft projects. So here I am. Here we are. Hello, Annie. Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So we're going to sort of just chit chat along. And I think, Annie, your plan is to ask some questions. Um, and you'll be able to see how easy it is to use these rulers. But first of all, let me just explain how they work. There's um, a set of 12 inch rulers and a set of six inch rulers. And they each come with a number of measurements on. So one particular one has a one inch and a three quarter inch measurement. And then the other two have four variations of measurements from a sixteenth up to five eighths of an inch in width. And the principle with the rulers is you choose which width you want to create an edging for. And then with that facing you, there is a lip at the edge of the ruler on the underside. So you need to have the number facing you and the lip on the underside catches under the paper and you cut a perfect half inch edge around your project. So really, really simple, but I do understand it's really, really confusing. So let me show you um, just how I start. Yes, please. If you follow my project, you'll know that I use um, a sixteenth of an inch an awful lot to do my edgings. So I'm going to use the sixteenth of an inch edge here. I've got the one sixteenth facing me. The sixteenth lip is underneath. You can hear it catching. And the secret is to butt that lip up against your project. So what I've done is matted um, a photo that, did you take this one, Annie? I did, photo? yes. Um, onto some black card because I want it to have a very narrow black border before I start building up the layers. So taking the 16th, 1 16th of an inch ruler, you can see if you slide it and hold it flat on your project, mm. it catches on the edge of the photo. Mm. And you hold it in place, make sure that it's caught all the way down. Take your craft knife, work on a craft mat because obviously you're, let's just go out a little bit on the camera so that you can see the whole thing. Um, you want um, a self-healing mat underneath it, not the work surface. Obviously not the kitchen <laughs> table. And you press and drag. Now one cut may cut it, depends how sharp your craft knife is. Two cuts hopefully definitely will. And what that's done is cut Blimey. a really fine black edge. So you just go all the way around your project. So you need to have a central starting point which in this case is my photo. Um, but it could be you know, just an element that you cut out. An elephant. An elephant. <laughs> Tricky on an elephant, don't you think? <laughs> that photograph should have been labelled Christmas dinner. Christmas dinner. Easter lunch. No, no, they were for Christmas dinner. Oh, no. They are no more then. No. Oh. So that's it. Let's move the ruler. Get rid of the bits. Uh, and is that perfectly straight all the way around? That is perfectly straight, one sixteenth of an inch edge all the way around. And I've done that in black just to frame the photograph. Mm -hmm. Now I want to put it onto some cardstock and build up the layers. Mm -hmm. So in between that, I've cut a six and three eighths by four and three eighths photo mat. And I've used a cloud punch to put a corner little corner slots in it. Uh -huh. um, so let's just see if this mats in really nicely. It may, it may not, it may need to be a little bit bigger. And what this will do around the six by four photo with its one sixteenth of an inch border is give um, an eighth of an inch of a cream border all the way around. So it's just working in increments of your measurements really. Let's poke that in. It's peeling up the corner. It's a little bit tricky to get in. Let's do it like that. 
So now we've got a photograph framed with the narrow bracket black edge, which really sort of captures the picture and gives it a, an edge. We've got it sitting on a cream mat, and now I want to put it onto a blue and green mat to complement the colours in the picture. So I'm just going to use some double-sided tape. Oh, <laughs> Annie, you've seen this before. Just to hold it in place. And the reason I'm using double-sided tape is because if you've got access to Undo, which is the magic product that lifts anything that's taped down up, if you go wrong, you can always undo and start again. Whereas if you use tacky glue, once it's stuck down, it's down forever. Right. So let's bring the cardstock in. So I'm going to do a wider edge. So I don't want to put my picture right up at the edge of the cardstock. I want to give myself enough room to play and create a wider border. So I'm going to stick down there. And then I think for this next size border, I'm going to go for the three eighths of an inch. Let's find it. There it is. Oh, Harry Charville's come home as well. Hello, Harry. Hello. We're just chit chatting on the video. Hi, Harry. <laughs> You've had a good day. So, what we're going to do now is take the three eighths of an inch side and the edge, I want the edge, it's quite a wide edge, there is a line that runs along here on the ruler and that is telling me that that's the three eighths of an inch. That's, oh, that's, that's so the not. wrong way round, Claire. It's five eighths. You've got the three eighths backwards. So we'll turn it over. Even I can tell that and I'm registered blind. So <laughs> so <laughs> I'm so pleased you're here. Right, <laughs> let's get the right edge. And sometimes your ruler won't catch on your paper. Oh. You can push it down, push it down. So little tip is just with your finger, just run it along the edge to lift it up. Oh. And then your ruler will catch. And then Good tip. Cut away. And go all the way round. So again, if it won't catch, just take the end of your finger and just run it under the edge. It just lifts it, you can press it down again afterwards, but the ruler will catch on it and cut. And you can see it's cutting it out. So let's just whiz round. Even if you've used tape right up on the edge, you can still just lift that edge. Turn it round. Oh, we've got a full house. Good. Afternoon, Olive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, super job. So now we've got a perfectly framed picture ready to go on the last of the layers. And you can keep, keep build, building up layers. Crispy. You can keep building up layers and creating as many as you want with whatever you're layering on. Miri board is, I use Miri board lots. You know, the silver and gold card. And a 1 16th of an inch. And it just gives a really 1 nice... 1 16th is the tiny one. Is that the one you did first of all on the black? Yes. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just the really nice narrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be nice in gold or silver on a colour, wouldn't it? So I'm going to come out again. And this time I want to do a quarter of an inch. So I want this outside border to be narrower than the blue one. So that was three eighths. So now I'm going to go for a quarter. So let's find the ruler that's got a quarter on. Here it is, this side. And so you're always butting the edge of the ruler, that lip, up against the outer layer. You have to work from the inside outwards and mm. not the outside mm -hmm. inwards. And I think sometimes that's where it gets confusing. So make sure that your lip on the ruler is catching. And if it isn't, just run, whoops, your finger down the edge of the paper. 
the liner sack and let's do it anyway, it's just like that. So this is the quarter inch edging. Harry, could you just grab me a piece of black card from over there? And I'll just finish it off on a black mat. Oh, I'm sticking out just where you're standing. Now, if you haven't quite cut through your cardstock, got a couple of places it hasn't quite gone through, you can really easily put your ruler back up, butting that lip against the edge of the underneath layer and cut again and it will cut in exactly the same place. Marvellous. You're impressed with that, aren't you? Very. <laughs> it's, a, I mean, it's a really it's simple It's a very tool. effective way of getting a straight edge when I can't draw a straight line for topping. Hmm. So there's our photo all framed but I just want I mean great if you just wanted to make cards you make cards like this I mean mm -hmm. you're just with photos that you've taken yeah with kind of uneven edges and it's a really good way of doing that matting and layering mm. and then just sticking it straight onto a pre-made card blank mm -hmm. and you're done yeah but with neat edges rather than higgledy piggledy ones yeah I always think if you can't cut a straight edge cut. don't bother no oh, cut sorry. cut a wiggly one don't try and cut straight if you can't cut straight. If you cut a wiggly edge, you know, around some words, or if you cut it, yeah. you can get away with it. I think, I think the answer is don't, don't bother do making it. a cut. <laughs> don't do it at all. Right, I'm just going to stick this down onto the black mat and go back to my 1 16th of an inch border. Oh, you do like a 1 16th, don't you? I do. I do. It's neat. Okay, so is it you've got it? You've got it. So back to the ruler with the one sixteenth on, you might not be able to see it, but it is here. So it's the edge to the right. Is that right? I'll turn it around. Yeah, the edge to the right. The most tiny one. So it's butting up against that green cardstock really nicely, so I'm just going to cut. And then you've got a perfect little edge. Now by the time you get to this outer layer, because I've got one, I've got the photograph, one, two, three, four, this is my fifth layer. The ruler isn't actually sitting flat, it's raised up slightly, which does help hook that lip onto the layer that you've just added. And don't forget if you if it's sliding off, not catching the edge, just lift your cardstock edge up or your card edge up. And you can use these to layer all sorts of different uh, mediums, card and leather and Paper. It will even work on photocopy paper. You can go as thin as that. And Ta -da! there it is. A really perfectly layered Christmas goose picture. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Oh, so sad. No, that's a very good, Claire. Thank you. So here's another couple of cards that I've used. My, this one. The one sixteenth of an inch well, layer on. You haven't though, have you? There's yeah. something how have you done the corners though? Oh cut it and before I've stuck it down, I've cut the white square, shape the corner, cut the gold using your using the perfect layer ruler perfect and then layer. shape the corner before it's stuck down. And, and you shape that with a stamp? No, a corner chomper. A corner chomper. So just one of the We Are Memory Keepers corner chompers. Mm -hmm. Or um, 
a lot of companies make a corner punch that will cut out that stuck cut corner and then I've done it again. Okay. So the perfect layer ruler will always cut you a square corner whether yeah. you've cut the corner out of the layer above or not. So that is um, with gold mirror card. Really simple layered card but it just gives it that pop out of the page. Yeah. And then this one was using the eighth of an inch and silver mirror card and that was just on paper white card that had been painted with acrylic chalk paints and it's got a nice silver wide border to go with the glittery winter feel of I'm not going to say the snowman the scarecrow because if I say it's the snowman you'll tell me it's a scarecrow won't you? well it <laughs> seems to me that it is a scarecrow it's pretending a it's to a, be a snowman it's a jofy winter it does have a carrot nose. Yes. Snowman comes carrot. Okay. So really easy to use. Snow crow. Snow crow. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> um, in both lengths, I have got the six inch lengths and they're great to travel about with. However, could we find them today? No. So is the six inch sufficient for a standard card? Well, it would be for a 6x6 six six card. Oh, what about the, the portrait ones? But if you're going than... to do something the size that we've done now, yeah. your 6 inches would run out about here. Well, it was the length no. of the photo. So actually, that's quite good to have the longer ones. The longer ones are good. What are they called? Perfect layer rulers. Okay. Yeah. Well worth having those in your crafty stash. Mm. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that from us. And um, thanks for watching. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye.